Well, I think we need to take Erdogan at his word. Remember, Erdogan runs the AKP, which is the Muslim Brotherhood of the Turkish people, the, the party of Turkey, which is equivalent to the Muslim Brotherhood. So they not only want an Islamic state, they want Sharia law. And he's slowly been consolidating, consolidating power over the past few years. We saw the purge of 20, 30,000 professors last summer in the mm -hmm. so-called uh, coup. And now he, he wanted this referendum that he put out because he wanted to be able to cancel the prime minister's position, to end the parliamentary system, to have control over three to five million civil servants, which he would then likely fire or control from a, a autocratic perspective. And then also uh, increase the number of judges he hires so that he can take away some of the checks and balances in the system. All of that is a move towards autocracy. And Erdogan himself, as a mayor of Istanbul in 1996, Bill said that democracy is like a train. You get on it until you get where you want to go, and then you get off. And this is why Islamists can never be trusted to, to say that, well, they're for elections, they're for democracy. It is always a one-way street. It was that way in the revolution in Iran. It was that way for the Brotherhood in Egypt. It's that way for Jamaat Islamiyah in Pakistan. Wherever you want, they are not... They are authoritarians who believe in a theocracy. So I hope, and the, the silver lining here is that this may be what pushes the rest of the Turkish community to begin to push back and actually have a Turkish awakening the way the Arab awakening started in 2011. Well, it doesn't seem likely because the last time anybody tried a Turkish awakening, there were, as you noted, a purge of the university system. They got rid of that kind of that line of thought very quickly. There was a purge in government's uh, civil servants as well. So my question is, like, how did this happen? I mean, how did we reach this point in Turkey? I also I, I should point out for folks listening, and I'd love your comment on it, apparently the larger cities like Ankara, Istanbul, uh, Izmir, all voted against giving him more power. So uh, where, where did this support come from? That's a great question. The opposition party, uh, much to my agreement, uh, came out yesterday and said, uh, they're not even going to accept the results. He won by 1%, 51.3%. And there's a lot of concern of uh, uh, illegitimacy of the elections and uh, uh, the fact that it may have been a corrupt election. So a lot of this has to be verified. Uh, and this is why we are not a democracy or a republic. Uh, majoritocracies are always doomed to failure. 50% plus one can often vote to end the rights of minorities and civil liberties, et cetera. Not to mention that there was a lot of irregularities in the smaller cities and smaller towns that appear to have shipped in many. The yeah. Kurdish community might have been excluded in the voting. So there's just a ton of irregularities. And this is where we need uh, uh, the West to sort of chime in and say, listen, not only is this a, a large economic powerhouse in the Middle East, but this is a NATO country that we should hold accountable to the rest yeah. of the democracies. I think you beat me to that. I was just